Now at 6 on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, thousands still without power and cleanup continues along the North Carolina coast as Hurricane Arthur puts 4th of July celebrations on hold. A growing population, our country welcomed millions of new residents today as naturalization ceremonies take place around the U.S. And it's the 40th year for one Greensboro tradition, but this year the Fun Fourth Festival heads to a new location. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. And thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. Those stories are coming right up, but first here at 6, meteorologist Doug Lindsay is here with the first check of your weather on the ones forecast. And Doug, I just can't believe how much quieter it is today. It's really nice outside. Yeah, you know, and it's pretty typical when you have a, a hurricane close by averages. Tomorrow looks good too. Sunshine and 83. The rest of the holiday weekend and your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, see you then. Thank you, Doug. There are still more than 2,500 people without power across North Carolina after Hurricane Arthur shot up the Carolina coast. That is down from about 83,000 people. And Duke Energy says it should have all of the power back on by the end of the day. More than 800 Duke Energy technicians and specialists are working on the lines to help with quick response. Duke Energy staged crews and locations along the coast before the storm hit. And despite all the outages, Governor Pat McCrory says no one was killed or seriously injured. Time Warner Cable News reporter Amy Elliott has more. Governor The governor said emergency shelters along the coast are no longer needed. The United States Coast Guard is busy assessing all the damage left along the coast. The district commander has been conducting flyovers all morning and afternoon along the beach. The Coast Guard has been working in conjunction with the Army Corps of Engineers, local and state officials. Early assessments were fairly positive. Port of Wilmington is now back to normal status and has been completely reopened. You can't catch up with a storm. In this case, I think collectively we did a good job of staying ahead of it. And I'm pleased to report that we had no significant search and rescue cases up and down the North Carolina coastline last night. The Coast Guard says they'll be busy for the next three days and will try to get other ports, bridges, and the ferry system fully operational. People in Dare County are returning home to some minor storm damage after a mandatory evacuation yesterday. Time Warner Cable News reporter Andy Madison shows us how they're spending their 4th of July cleaning up after Arthur. Andy Madison, Time Warner Cable News. Fireworks shows scheduled for Friday night in the area were postponed until later in the weekend. And the Crystal Coast also saw some minor damage. There were some downed power lines and outages throughout the night. Duke Energy at one point reported more than 16,000 people without power in Carteret County. However, crews worked quickly to fix the down lines and were able to get most people back up and running for the 4th of July. The Department of Transportation also working to clear roads that were flooded and damaged by the storm. Parts of NC-12 from south of Bonner Bridge to Ocracoke Island are closed because of sand, water and downed power lines. Transportation Secretary Tony Tata says people should stay off the roads as much as possible while the crews are working to clean up. Here's what it looks like. Get ready for the wind. Check out this home video. Richard Neal owns this old lighthouse about 35 miles southeast of Wrightsville Beach. He turned it into a bed and breakfast about two years ago, and he decided to ride out the storm from the lighthouse. He said he faced winds up to 99 miles an hour. He had to repair a few broken windows, but is still taking in some guests for the holiday weekend. The storm is out of the way, but there are still strong rip currents along the coast. Yellow flags were flying on Wrightsville Beach today, but lifeguards say they could upgrade that to red. That signals extremely dangerous conditions for anyone swimming in the ocean. And for those of you who won't be swimming in the ocean but might hit the pool this weekend, you still need to keep safety on the mind too. Officials say you should drink a lot of water while swimming because you can become dehydrated. They also say that not all flotation devices are the same. Some don't work. The, the flotation devices that seem fun, that seem cute, they're fun colors and the kids like them, they're not necessarily safe. They're not necessarily going to keep your child afloat if anything goes wrong. 
For more swimming safety advice and information, you can download the Red Cross Swim app from your smartphone. Also tonight, Greensboro police found a woman dead at a homeless camp this morning. They say they found Melinda Buis east of the Greenway near Spring Garden Street around 8 o'clock. Investigators are still trying to determine a cause of death, but they do not suspect any foul play. Buis was 45 years old. Still ahead here at 6 o'clock, an old Greensboro tradition takes a new twist as thousands celebrate with the Fun Fourth Festival. I'm meteorologist Doug Lindsay. Hurricane Arthur leaving behind a big mess for Eastern Corner Cable News on ABC 45. A 4th of July tradition for Greensboro is now in its 40th year, but it's the first year in a new location. Time Warner Cable News reporter Elise Michelanis has more on the Fun Fourth Festival. <laughs> There will also be a concert and fireworks show starting at 7.30 tonight at the Greensboro Coliseum. Winston-Salem welcomes 50 new residents as part of an Independence Day naturalization ceremony. About 30 countries were represented at the event today. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services staff conducted the ceremony at Old Salem Museums and Gardens. And for one Polish immigrant, it meant a great deal. I feel privileged. I feel that I can um, follow my dreams and I, there's a lot of opportunities here for me um, and I am grateful and I feel very proud to become American. This is the fourth year Old Salem hosted that event. And still ahead here at 6 o'clock, a lumberyard fire flares back up this morning after firefighters thought they had put it out. That's coming up in our Carolina Minute. And weather takes its toll in Daytona. Jason Brown is in next with sports. Now here's tonight's Carolina Minute. The National Weather Service confirms an EF1 tornado touched down in Duplin County last night. Winds as strong as 100 miles per hour hit just before 9 o'clock. Meteorologists say the storm was a result of Hurricane Arthur. It caused damage to trees and a few homes, but there were no major injuries. Firefighters are still investigating the cause of a fire at a lumber yard in Statesville. Six fire stations responded to the fire at the Godfrey Lumber Yard last night. The fire reignited early this morning and crews came back out to put it out for good. No one was injured. Two people are in the hospital after a wreck in Johnston County. This happened around 2.30 yesterday afternoon on I-95 and shut down the interstate for a while. Highway Patrol troopers say a driver heading south lost control in the rain and hit a tree. The driver was pinned and had to be airlifted to wake men. These stories are more available anytime on Time Warner Cable News. This update at 11 o'clock. Stay safe and enjoy your Independence Day. So to come here at 6 o'clock, a special celebration in Guilford County as we honor two North Carolinians who signed the Declaration of Independence. And right after this quick break, meteorologist Doug Lindsay has your full Weather on the Ones forecast. Your Weather on the Ones forecast. Sharon, back to you. Good looking overnight lows for a while. Thanks, Doug. Uh, 238 years ago, the Continental Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence and established America as a free nation. In time for the 4th of July holiday, our Washington, D.C. Bureau reporter Jeff Bennett takes a look at the historic document that started it all. Most North Carolina coast, be sure to join us for that at 11. Finally, here at 6, a wounded warrior from Fort Bragg is on his way back to recovery. Fort Bragg soldier Sergeant Corey Muzzy was hurt during a weapons training exercise back in February. Chris Williams traveled to San Antonio to speak with Sergeant Muzzy for his first TV interview. You can do it too. In San Antonio, Texas, Chris Williams, Tom Warner Cable News. That is our time here at 6 o'clock. ABC World News with Diane Sawyer is next. Hope to see you back here at 11 on ABC 45. And you can find us anytime on Time Warner Cable News. Happy 4th.